Hey guys, Brian and Aaron here from Five to Go. It is moving day, moving and day. Uh, we are in our time here down in Florida. We are just moving um, about 10 to 12 miles, about once a month. So we're going to take advantage of all of our moving days to share stuff with you guys. Ooh. Today, I'm going to give you guys some tips on driving one of these things, maneuvering at low speeds, driving on the road, stuff like that, and might even be some drone stuff. What? Yeah. So, we are just about ready to go. I just have to lift the stabilizers and we're ready to roll. And uh, first tip is take your time. Definitely. Definitely always. take your time. Uh, no matter what RV, not even just motorhomes, take your time. Mm -hmm. Make sure everything is taken care of, make sure everything's put away, make sure everything's safe, make sure everything's stowed, locked up, secured, all of that, mm -hmm. including the children. Yeah, make sure you have your loved ones. Yeah, don't leave anyone <laughs> behind. <laughs> all right, let's hop in this thing, drive down the road a bit, and then we'll uh, talk about maneuvering at low speeds. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> Okay, so when you are driving through campgrounds, you want to make sure and go slow, check your corners and check your overheads because there are frequently trees and um, some parks aren't as great about keeping them trimmed. Uh, so just know how tall you are. If you see a, a nasty branch hanging down, see if you can kind of wiggle around it. Uh, but the biggest thing to watch out for is corners and signs and other RVs because sometimes signs tend to be way out on the corners like I swear people that build RV parks don't actually like maneuver RVs through them. Uh, so just watch your corners. And also in a motorhome, you're gonna need to watch out for a thing called tail swing. And I will explain more yeah. about that in a little bit once we get up to an empty parking lot here in a bit. Otherwise, give yourself plenty of braking distance. You are in a big heavy thing. Yeah, you got big brakes, but you also weigh probably 24, 26,000 plus pounds. So give yourself plenty of room. If you are a normal driver on the road, please don't cut in front of RVs or big trucks or large vehicles towing things. Just stop doing it, okay? It takes us a long time to slow down. So green light, here we go. See that red light way up ahead of me? I am already slowing down for it. You can never start slowing down too early. The last thing you wanna do is misjudge your distance and have to slam on the brakes at the end. If someone behind you is following close, they might hit you. If you have stuff inside that's not completely stowed and secured, it might go flying forward. Just take your time, slow down, long ahead when you think you need to. One thing you're probably going to have to deal with while driving a big rig like this is people like that last guy back there. Uh, most people don't want to be stuck behind a big slow motorhome, so rather than wait for you to go by and just pick a spot out behind you, I'm talking about uh, this guy right here, um, they will instead rush out in front of you. Uh, luckily, that guy went two or three lanes over, but don't always count on that. If you see someone creeping up on a corner, uh, assume that they are going to jump out in front of you because more often than not, they're going to. So you might have to slow down rapidly because they just don't understand. That light turned yellow on me and I had no choice but to stop for it. And uh, Tara had something loose. What was that? The vacuum. The vacuum. Oh, that wasn't Tara's. Okay, so we have a vacuum over there. We should probably secure that when we drive. <laughs> Don't bother me, I'm on my phone, Dad. What if I get closer? One thing I haven't talked about in a little while is the steer safe steering stabilizer that we installed back in Colorado. My drive home from Florida to Colorado was, I like to call it movie driving, where my hands were going like this all the time, and it is perfectly controllable. It is a night and day difference. 
So if you have a big motorhome and you don't have a steering stabilizer, I cannot recommend it enough. And I really, really like the one that we chose, the steer safe stabilizer, because uh, it's just a lot beefier, it's got heavier duty components, and it's not just another little hydraulic shock down there. It's actually lots of heavy steel, big beefy springs. I, I really like it. I feel much more confident about how it was installed than how the other ones are installed. So check out that video. It's a little ways back. I'll link to it up here and um, check it out. See this guy right here in front of me? He ducked into my lane while I was slowing down for a red light because he didn't want to be behind that big blue truck up there. Don't be that guy. Don't make other people slam on their brakes. Shame on you. Okay, there's a nice empty parking lot over here. And we're gonna come over here and talk all about tail swing. But first, when cornering, motorhomes are actually much, much easier than pulling a trailer. Uh, you do have to turn a little bit wide, obviously, because you're long. However, you don't have anything that's trailing you that's going to really cut the corner. So when you turn, you just want to just keep an eye on your back corners. All right, I found a nice empty-ish parking lot. So the next thing we're going to talk about, and I'm actually going to display, is tail swing. So you see this section of the RV right here? It's basically from the rear axle to the rear of the rig. That's the tail of a motorhome. And when you drive sharply around a corner, because the front wheels are turning and that rear axle becomes a pivot point, everything behind that rear axle actually swings out in the opposite direction from the direction you're turning. It's a little hard to understand, so I'm going to take my drone, I'm going to throw it up there, looking down, and then I'm going to show you what tail swing looks like here in this parking lot, where I'm not going to hit anything, but I'll put in some graphics to kind of show you uh, how things turn in relation to that tail back there. So let's go ahead and throw you guys up there, and then I'm going to drive in circles for a little bit. When you're in tight quarters, um, especially at gas stations, because you're going to be close up to the pump on one side, and then if you just crank the wheel and start turning away, it's only gonna take a foot or two before you're swinging over and you're hitting the supports around the pump, the pump itself, anything in there, other cars, stuff like that. So it may not look from above like it swings out very much, but if you have a longer rig, this one's about 37 feet, I'm not sure how far it is from the axle to the rear, but we've definitely seen some with kind of a longer overhang than that. Um, also, some of the Class Cs that have the long tail, they probably have a tighter turning radius than this chassis does. So those are actually gonna turn a little bit sharper and that tail is gonna come out in a more pronounced way. So just keep an eye on tail swing. If you're near anything and you want to turn away from it, just do a nice gentle turn or give yourself some distance to get away from it for, to the front before you turn so that swing misses whatever the obstacle is. And also, turning on the inside, like I said when I was coming into the parking lot, not so bad in a motorhome, but if you're towing a trailer, when you turn that truck, 
you know that that trailer is going to track inside really tight. Now we don't have the car hooked up right now because we're just moving such a short distance we didn't want to mess around with it. So we just put it in a Walmart parking lot down around the way. If the car was hooked up, you would see that towed vehicles track really well inside the lines because they're very short compared to how long the motorhome is. So you really don't have to worry about your towed vehicle. It's just kind of back there following along. The main things you have to worry about with those is whether the brakes are working, making sure that it's in neutral and it's in its ready towed to go mode. And that all depends on the type of vehicle. Mine is super easy, some are super difficult. So check your manuals, make sure all that stuff gets set up properly. Uh, but when it comes to actually driving with the toad, you really don't have to worry about too much. I would say the only thing you really have to worry about is going across bumps that go down really sharply or up really sharply because your hitch is probably going to be down low if you're towing a car like i am if you have a jeep it's going to be up a little higher but with a car that hitch is down really low so if you are going over dips or bumps there's a good chance that that thing is going to scrape so if you go really slow you'll reduce the amount of bounce so i am baking in this sun so let's go ahead and get over to the campground and I'll give you some tips on how to back into a site. Where do you want? Sewers. Sewers by the back tire. How far can I go and still have the pads on the concrete? Um, you can come back about a foot and a half. You can yeah. come back a little bit more. Okay. Good. Yeah, let me see if I can open up these doors. Okay, we're here. We're here. We're here. So slides are out. Um, this is a super easy spot to get into, so not a lot to <laughs> not a lot to explain about uh, backing this into this spot. However, um, motorhomes are easy mode. If you've ever done a truck and trailer or a truck and fifth wheel, you know it takes you know some backwards reversing, left is right, right is left, all of that stuff. This. It's just a big car, like a big truck, and it kind of goes where you want it to go. Oh, light. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, backing these things in is actually very, very easy. But again, watch your corners, have a spotter, look up. You want to look up, make sure there's nothing overhanging because there's all sorts of things up on the top that can snag on branches and get ripped apart. That's not very fun. So slides are out. Uh, I'm gonna hook up power. I just turned the generator off. We like to run the generator for the last 20 or 30 minutes of a drive just to keep the AC going because it is really hot here in Florida. Um, what else do we have to do, honey? Water, sewer, all that junk. All that's that's stuff. a different video. Okay, so let's go ahead and get finished set up and then we will close out this video with a couple tips. I know Erin has a few tips for you because she's my spotter. So let's get finished setting up and then we'll be right back with you guys in a couple minutes. When you're the spotter, the most important thing is not to get angry with the person who's driving. Because <laughs> they can't see what you can see. We're still married. We are, today. Um, so you wanna make sure you have your phone or your walkie talkie or whatever it is that you use on and everybody can hear you. And hopefully you've already looked at the site and kind of know what you're backing into. A lot of the times when stuff is really tricky, I have Brian just pop out and so he knows when I say you're getting close to this, he knows what I'm talking about. Um, doesn't always like to get out but that's okay when you're giving your directions you just want to be really clear and you want to make sure that you have your system set up so we use passenger side and driver side so nobody gets confused saying right or left is it your right my left whatever so passenger and driver is always a helpful way to you know turn more towards driver turn more towards passenger and you can get it you can get in make sure you know where your slides are so, and where they're gonna be when they open. So if you have a tree or something, you know where that's gonna hit on your rig and whether or not you're in the right spot. But other than that, Well, just... th this rig too, the bay doors. 
Oh, right, I forgot about that. Because with the travel trailer, they opened up, so we never had to be really worried about that. But with these, you guys saw in the video, you have to make sure when you open them, they're not going to hit any of the poles or any trees or anything. So that's a good point, too. Thanks, Brian. Thank you guys for watching so much. We really appreciate you. If you've jumped in on Discord, we've loved talking to you and meeting you over there. If you are a road runner, we absolutely love having you and having you in our special Discord group that we can chat to you more intimately. And um, I hope you like this video. We'll see you in the next one. Bye.